In this module, we're looking at augmented reality, virtual reality, and assistive technologies. And we're going to briefly go through the range of new technologies that are impacting upon classrooms, and particularly for students with uh, particular learning needs around assistive technologies. So looking first at augmented and virtual reality. Now I've given you a range of readings here to explore what it means, those terms, and we generally have a continuum from the real world through augmented reality, through to augmented virtual reality, and then virtual environments or virtual reality. And to get, collectively that's all called mixed reality. Um, but in practice we break those into augmented reality and virtual reality. Um, augmented is generally where we see the real world and have more information placed on our screens in front of us so that we can um, interact with the real world in a more involved way. So it might be seeing details about the direction that you're looking. Um, so some heads-up displays in cars will tell you the speed you're traveling or it might show you a basic map of where you're going. Um, that's augmented reality where we're getting more information about the real world around us um, to assist us in doing things in the real world. Virtual reality is where we put on headsets that completely generally enclose us and we can then, uh, I'll go through the explanations of that a little bit later when we have explore some of those ideas. Um, but exploring more about augmented reality, one of the first uses of augmented reality were through what are called quick reaction codes or QR codes. These are like a barcode um, and we can then use our mobile phones to look at the, these barcodes or QR codes um, if the mobile phone has a camera and we can then see sort of in like in 3D holograms in front of us even though we can't see them with our eyes our camera on our mobile device can see them and present what it's seeing on the screen of your mobile device. So have a look at some of the little video clips that I've created there. You can also create your own QR codes. Um, very popular in primary schools whereby you've got workstations that students can move between and instead of reading a, a sheet of information they'll scan the QR code and find out a whole lot of information about where they're at. Um, in secondary schools it could be used say for science experiments as they move through various steps of a science experiment they could scan the QR code and it would show them a little video clip for example explaining the next um, procedure. Uh, I was involved in creating one for a school on the north coast whereby they had a rainforest on their campus and we created a series of QR codes that as they walked through the rainforest they could scan these various things and find out about the trees or the flora and fauna associated with different aspects of that rainforest trail. Um, we later then moved on from that to using what are known as um, near field devices which instead of having to scan your mobile device will pick up when it's near these little sensor devices and will then present the information just based upon your proximity. A little bit like what we use in our, um, our passports. So you just have to sort of swipe them through or some credit cards now have them as well so you just swipe them and you get a whole lot of information. Um, even more advanced than that is where we use QR or we use um, augmented reality based upon our location. But here I've given you a whole range of little video clips to look at that will explain augmented reality from being able to have virtual clothing stores and choosing um, the dress you have will appear in front of you um, and you can try on different bits of clothing. Um, Lego's been quite big into this on the, all their devices, all their um, Lego kits. You can bring them up to little booths in many of the Lego stores and see what the actual construction would look like in 3D um, when you swipe the box in front of it. Uh, there's a whole lot of storybooks being done around augmented reality and in fact a lot of children's books are being turned into augmented reality storybooks um, that you can then engage with in more detail. There's a range of science 
based ones here, um, ones for the solar system. Um, there's some good ones around anatomy, whereby you can put different QR codes on your body, and then as you move, you can have a skeleton superimposed on your body or an intest intestinal system superimposed on your body, and students can sort of examine that and see, that, see it in a little bit more detail than if they were obviously just watching a video. And then in geography and mathematics, there's a whole lot of other range of applications. Um, now, you used to be able to create your own augmented reality pop-up books, although I think Zooburst has now become a iPad app, and so it's not the functionality is not as great as it once was. Um, but you can also use very simple uh, graphics programs, such as SketchUp, where you can create terrain maps or create objects like the Eiffel Tower, or here they're creating a table, and then have that model appear in augmented reality um, through a mobile device, or through a, any computer that has a webcam you can use it for. Um, the State Library of Queensland did a very big installation that I helped with on floodlines, whereby you could hold QR codes of various, which represented various maps, um, and hold it over your suburb, and it would show you then superimposed on that map what the flood was like um, for that particular suburb. Uh, so a whole lot of other little clips there. You can even get them now so they work in your car and the camera will watch objects in front of you and detect when they're too close or not and superimpose on your mobile device's screen um, warnings about stopping distance and vehicles changing lanes and so forth. So augmented reality is becoming much more popular um, and even integrated into some cars. They've had it for a long time in aircraft where you've got fighter pilots having lots of information being displayed in their field of view about how their plane is performing and other aircraft that they want to shoot down and so forth. Um, but now it's coming into vehicles and you can even create your own. Two of the most popular tools for creating your own augmented reality projects are Junio and Layer. And a good thing about these is that they can be linked to the location of your device. So as you move around a school, I've created a number of these um, interactive walk-arounds for various schools, and as you come up to a classroom, it knows your location based upon the GPS coordinates of your mobile device, and it will then start presenting information on your computer screen. So it might be information about the timetable, or I tend to create these for schools when they're doing open days, etc. So as they come up to a classroom, it will show a whole lot of pictures or video clips or audio clips of what's been occurring in that particular classroom. But it could be simply one for students new to a school or say new to a university. They come up to a building and it will then see information about that building uh, displayed upon their computer screen or their mobile devices screen. And then of course we've got Project Glass being developed by Google whereby we can have these QR um, or augmented reality built into pairs of glasses whereby as we look at objects, we can have superimposed information appearing on our glasses screen. Um, and you can have a look at the video clips and explore that. That will be very popular very soon. Um, it's not quite available in Australia yet, but certainly it's available in the United States. And there are lots of schools exploring the uses of Google Glass um, in the classroom. The other thing I want to talk about briefly this week is assistive technologies. Okay. Generally we have lots of technologies that actually appear first in assistive classrooms or classrooms with students of special needs before they appear in the mainstream classrooms. Um, mostly because uh, students with special needs often have funding associated with them um, that can be used to purchase and explore the uses of various technologies. So there's been a range of new or of technological solutions to assist students with particular special needs. Uh, mobility impairment is certainly one. We've got um, roboticized um, wheelchairs and other things where they can move around more easily um, or use various input devices to choose the directions where they want to move um, with their mouth or other sorts of joysticks which can utilize the limited physical motions that people have. Um, but there's even ones now where they can use their thoughts using EEG headsets to determine which way they'll move and things of that nature. 
So you may very well have students in your classes that have mobility impairments or wheelchairs or other um, devices that they need to move around with. Now, of course, the most uh, famous of people with that, those sort of situations would be Stephen Hawking's, whereby despite his very severe physical um, disabilities, he can still actually perform at a very high level, in fact, some of the highest levels in the world, um, in what he's doing in terms of his academic and uh, research work. Okay, so you've got personal emergency response systems, which can inform uh, people if their student needs um, particular assistance. Um, so particularly with students that have got uh, physical difficulties, uh, having those sort of devices may be set up in your school, whereby if they're in the playground and they are suddenly at risk, they can activate these devices and seek assistance. Um, and so there's a range of those sort of devices. Access to computers. There's a range of new technologies available to allow students to utilize computers more easily and have access to them as easily as we have access. Probably one of the biggest factors there is on websites. Um, it's not quite required in Australia, but it is in the United States, where every website has to have um, the ability for people that have visual difficulties or in particular to be able to access it um, whereby every image is tagged so that if they can't actually see the image they might be have, have software that can read out the text on their computer screen and as it comes to images it will read out the text associated with those images so there's a legal requirement to actually include those image tags um, in any material that's been created for educational use. Um, not quite there yet with that in Australia, but certainly it's encouraged. Um, and certainly in your classrooms, you've got students with visual difficulties. Then um, incorporating those into the materials that you create and put online uh, will be important. Okay, so there's a range of other tools and technologies there that you can read about. Um, We've talked about the smart tables and so forth and the iPads. Um, iPads in particular have been exceptionally popular in um, special needs classrooms. And indeed, in Queensland, there was a special initiative to um, provide funding for every um, special school in Queensland to have sets of iPads um, at the beginning of last year. So they have been deployed effectively in those situations and they're exploring and finding lots of great uses for these devices um, with students. Particularly for students on the autism spectrum, um, there's been a range of apps and approaches being developed to allow them to facilitate communications with others um, and the structure and nature of computerized technologies often means that they can be more easily understood by students with um, on the autism spectrum and that simplified nature of understanding and the communications that it permits can be a benefit to students who can often feel overwhelmed in other situations. Um, range of other technologies such as flip turners, uh, flip, flip page turners, which will turn pages for students, um, various touchscreen type things, which tend to have been um, replaced now by the iPad based devices. Um, reading pens, where they've got pens that will read over text and read it out aloud to students, and then various other text readers um, that people with visual difficulties can have access to. And then finally on this we want to talk about the concept of universal design for learning. This is a framework that was originally set up for students with special needs, um, with the intent to make every learning situation accessible to every student. Uh, regardless of what particular needs they may have. But it's been expanded from that to really include um, differentiated learning so that you create the best possible learning experience for each student's individual particular needs and differences. Um, so originally it was certainly developed out of a need to um, incorporate students with special needs, but now universal design of for learning is 
um, seen as a way of ensuring that every student, regardless of their um, approaches to learning and ways they need to learn, um, can be accommodated. And I'm sure that you'll come across schools in your teaching careers that have embraced universal design for learning as one of their primary um, platforms. Bye for now.